Oh, nice. My check just hit. Another jersey? I could use another jersey. 200. What's 200? I'm out of money. It is entirely too hot to be dancing outside in Texas in a hockey jersey. It was 102 degrees when we were doing that. Uh, and I can't even wear a hockey jersey in the winter because we're still in the 80s and 90s down here. But the only thing hotter than what's going on out there is what's going on around the hockey world. These moves are, are wild. We're seeing players that have been with teams for their entire careers get kick to the curb. We're sorry, Corey Perry. We're seeing players put pen to paper and getting <laughs> paid. Eric Carlson and Jeff Skinner are rich men. Uh, they play hockey really well. They contribute to their team. But $11 million for a defenseman with the pelvis that's breaking? I mean, you know, we hope Eric will bring a Stanley Cup to San Jose, but it is tough to imagine him in his seventh and eighth year still playing at the level that he's at. And I don't know if your general manager has the case of overspending like I do on eBay with my jersey habits, but it's a tough game to play and there's not one way to win a Stanley Cup. There's not one way to put those puzzle pieces together to find a team that wins. Only one team does it every spring. Only one team gets to celebrate and enjoy that euphoria and get drunk and fall off of parade floats like Ivan Barbashev. Not everyone gets to experience that. And every general manager, all 30 of them, want to get to that spot. I mean, even 31, the Blues would love to do it again, but every general manager wants to be there. Envy, they want to experience that, and that's why everyone takes a different approach. Some players are gonna be overpaid, and that might really hurt your roster down the road. But, is it about trying to win for that one year? Is it about the future? It's kind of about everything, and that's why it's one of the toughest jobs in sports to be a general manager. We saw in the National Basketball Association, Anthony Davis gets traded. You know, superstars getting moved to try to make it happen, and, and the Pelicans come back with a lot of picks. You know, they're thinking of the future. They're thinking of the now. So it is very interesting, and everybody wants to be an, an armchair general manager and see, you know, what they would have done. But it's going to be really interesting to see these guys moving. Patrick Marlowe is no longer a Maple Leaf. He was no longer a Shark. Now he's no longer a Leaf. Now he's a Hurricane. Corey Perry. I'm sorry, Corey. I mean, you had a, a great run in Anaheim. Maybe they bring him back on a cheaper deal, but it really is hard to imagine uh, him getting, you know, paid anywhere near, you know, the same contract because, you know, age starts to catch up. It's a tough sport. These guys are going out there 82 games a season plus the playoff, putting their body on the line, trying to fight for the puck. Everyone is, you know, big, strong, pushing, shoving, hits, falling, injuries. It is really tough to keep that body pristine. And we got guys coming in at 17, 18 years old and scoring at uh, uh, crazy paces. So it is really interesting to see, you know, how general managers approach this, how they try to keep, you know, players and try to keep picks because you can't have a team full of 18 year olds because, you know, it's just not going to work. And you can't have a team full of 35 year olds because it's just not going to work. So there's got to be a perfect balance and see who does that right. And, you know, just like I said in my last video, no one's going to sign LeBron James and, and take over the league with just one signing. You know, maybe it's a signing that helps their team, you know, get over the hump and win, but no one player is going to take over. And even Eric Carlson, you know, he's joining a really good Sharks squad, and the Sharks think, you know, that's what we're missing. And then we bring in some other pieces. And, uh, you know, it is really tough to, to make a team because the salary cap, the general manager thought it would be $83 million. Well, it's 81.5 because why not National Hockey League? And why not tell them at the draft? You know, just... It doesn't make sense at all times, the league, but that's what it is. And now general managers are, are rushing to try to uh, see what will work for their team, see how to make it all fit. The Vegas Golden Knights, uh, you know, they signed William Carlson, not to be confused. They signed Wild Bill for a very team-friendly contract, $6 million a year. 
But, you know, they're still over the cap. Their hand is being forced. They're going to have to trade players. The National Hockey League is going to look very different next year. And, and pretty much every summer, this is the case. We see people moving. And then, you know, when it comes to October, it's like, uh, who's that guy? And that, oh, they don't. I, I, Dion Phaneuf is on the Kings. I forgot. You know, just things like that. It will be interesting to see how these general managers make it happen. It will be interesting to see which moves completely backfire. You know, $9 million a year for Jeff Skinner. That's a lot of money for a player, uh, but but it's a player and it's a need that fills the Sabres. And, you know, every general manager knows that their team has holes and every owner says, hey, uh, go do it right. And then when it doesn't work out, the general managers get fired. So it's a very tough spot to be in, but it will be fun to see which team does it right. It will be fun to see which moves pay off. P.K. Subban is the New Jersey Devil. It's just, it, it's, it's something else. And, uh, you know, make sure your team is smart. Make sure your team is savvy, and if not, you know, you could always turn on NHL 19 and try to make it happen too because some of these trades don't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And as these moves continue to go down and you try to figure out which player would fit your team best, remember, these are still human beings, and yeah, we're talking about men playing a game for millions of dollars, but nothing exists in a vacuum. Whether Joe Pavelski leaves or stays with the Sharks, he wants to win, he wants to get money, he has a family, all of these factors exist and everyone is talking to people and trying to grease the wheels to make it work. It's not easy. We'll see how it goes down. Thanks.